Hi folks, Patrick here, the Leaving Cert History Tutor, and here are my takes on this year's Leaving Cert Higher Level paper. I suppose it's a paper, you know, broadly I'm happy with. Um, I suppose it is a paper with some surprises as well. Um, certainly there was a, a strong sense that this was the year for Michael Collins. That I'd say we can forget about it at this stage. If there, if there's no question of Michael Collins this year, there probably never will be, right? But come here, that, that could be all proved wrong again next year. Um, but all right, yes, there were surprises like that. But at the same time, you know, even in that section, there are still some very good and doable questions, right? We'll get to that later on. I suppose the other thing I'd be focusing on here is what's not on the paper, you know, looking ahead to next year's Leaving Cert, because certainly with, with these papers, there's always indicators of what's, of what's coming up uh, next year. All right, so watch out for those. All right, so without further ado, let's dive in. What was the DBQ? As most people expected, coal rain. All right, so that finishes the set. Uh, Northern Ireland was the DBQ in 2010 and 2011 when we had Sunningdale and the Apprentice Boys of Derry. There we go. They finished the set. Right, all three now have come up. Now the documents themselves, uh, I'm very happy with them. They're very readable. Uh, sometimes you get documents that are very, you know, wordy. All right, or there'll be vocabulary in them that students won't understand. Um, but look, look what they've done this year. Um, uh, storm, we're told, is in, is in Belfast in document one. Now, again, I would expect more students to know that, but um, that's been, you know, that, that information is given here. Uh, what a Lundy is, right, a traitor, particularly from the Unionist side, he is, that, that is described as a Lundy, but again, that is defined in the document. Um, in both cases, we're given good background information on each individual, Bishop Edward Daly, and even Inez McCormack, um, the trade unionist and human rights activist. It's a lot of students were kind of scratching their heads and thinking, is she a unionist? Is she a, is she a Protestant? Or like what side of the political divide is she on? We were told in the very first sentence, my own background was Protestant and I attended McGee College. All right. Now, the questions themselves, question 1A, B, C and D, I'm not going to say a lot about. They're very straightforward, right? Most students would be scoring, once again, full marks here. 2A, uh, do both documents agree what was recommended by the Lockwood Committee? And on the government's response to its recommendations, refer to both documents in your answer. They do. OK, so I think um, uh, students will be well able to tackle that five plus five answer. Right. Um, giving equal treatment and discussion to each document with reference. Question two B. Do both documents suggest that nationalists and unionists alike oppose Lockwood's rec recommendations? Refer to both documents in your answer. They certainly do. And you'll be able to find lots of reference to support that point. 3A, so we're on out of criticism. In what ways does document A illustrate the value of an autobiography as a historical source material? Make, first time I've seen this phrase, make detailed reference to the document in your answer, right? So very important now that students use reference, you know, that backs up the point that yes, these are useful sources, you know, whatever references then that they make, that they draw conclusions from, from those, you know, that it's a primary source, it provides us with you know, basically on the ground at the time information that is vital if you're going to understand any historical topic. Question B, uh, would you consider the document B is an objective source? Give reasons for your answer referring to the document. I would argue it isn't, you know. Uh, Inus McCormack uh, has very strong feelings about the wrong done to Derry. Um, seven faceless men are described as modern day Lundies. Okay, she also, you know, you know, she also praises, you know, you know, I suppose the organization of the protest to it, you know, that this will sow the seeds for the, the organization of the civil rights movement to come, you know. So um, she's very supportive um, of, um, well, first of all, she's very, you know, how would I put it? No, she's not objective anyway. All right. Uh, she certainly takes a side here. Now, so question four. No, this is a first. Um, how did the Coleraine unit controversy and other issues contribute to tension in Derry um, in the mid to late 1960s? That is a lovely question, right? I would anticipate a lot of students writing good, long, five, six paragraph answers here because you can do so much. You can talk about Coleraine and that controversy, but you can bring in things then like the civil rights march, uh, the civil rights movement that developed, Um in the north, right, and of course Derry was a flashpoint for many of those controversies, you know, so again, if you look at things like 1968, Bunturnet Bridge, um, and of course, you can actually bring in the other case study on the apprentice boys of Derry, okay, 
Uh, so you're going to actually end up here talking about two two case studies, two for the price of one. It's always brilliant. Okay, so the, 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 there will be fine meaty answers there, right? Um, so as I said, no great issues with the document question. I think most people will do really, really well here. Okay, now so we'll move on to Ireland. Now, nobody does Ireland topic one. Some schools do Ireland topic two. Um, question one here is tricky. Right, it's the contribution of Michael Davitt and our Charles pa Stuart Parnell to land agitation and land reform. I know from examining it um, over the years that will not be a well done question if it is taken on, unless you know your stuff. Unless you know your stuff. Number two is lovely though, lovely case study type question. Why did the 1913 strike and lockout in Dublin prove controversial? Okay, and number three, I can see a lot of people going for this question. Why and how did Irish Unionism develop during the period 1870 to 1914? Couldn't get better, right? Fine, meaty answers there. Question four is all right as well. You know, usually you get the cultural nationalism question here. So from 19, 1870 to 1914, what was the impact of two of the following in Irish life? So gone the, the days of two or more, which I miss. I should bring back those questions. But uh, the two uh, you can pick from will be the GA. Uh, the Consolidation of Catholic Identity and the Gaelic League. So I'd say the first and the third one there will be very, very popular. Now, so Ireland topic three. No, Michael Collins. No, didn't happen. Okay. But I think there's enough questions here to get, you know, get people out of jail. Right? If you, I, I don't think, like, th there's some lovely questions here. Now, question one. Um, during the period 1912 to 1920, what factors contributed to the partition of Ireland uh, now, they've kind of snipped that question. Usually that would run on to 22 or 23 and incorporate the treaty. Uh, now, when it is that broad, it causes problems, you know, because a lot of students aren't able to finish that particular question, but they should be able to manage this one, right? It goes up as far as 1920. Uh, number two, how did the Unionist Party in power respond to the challenges it faced from 1920 to 45? Okay, so... Um, there's a case study there, the Belfast Blitz, they'll bring that in. And I suppose the economic and social policy of the unionist uh, government that was in place at the time. Now, this is number three is a lovely, lovely question. What was the impact of the Eucharistic Congress? Uh, 1932 on Irish life. So you can talk about the immediate impact, the organisation of it, the response of the Irish people and government to it. But then you're looking at things like, I suppose, in terms of um, legislation, Right, um, that Ireland became a very Catholic, uh, very, yeah, I'd say it, very Catholic and conservative country in terms of things like um, drink laws, abortion, censorship, all that was um, strengthened by the Eucharistic Congress, um, and I, I suppose it, it also it also created what was called this duopoly of power, right between the state and church, you know, that basically, and a lot of it, it didn't work out very well, you know, that the state, that the church were given a free hand in things like the running of hospitals, schools, and the other state institutions uh, for uh, single mothers and and uh, and, um, and babies, all right? Now, so, uh, number four, uh, during the period 1923 to 45, why did Irish governments find it difficult to achieve economic success? Okay, so you will look at the common and ale and Fianna Fáil governments during that period. Okay, I'd say, yeah, I'm happy enough with that section. Again, no Michael Collins, but I think there's enough there that more students will be able to, to do, uh, that they would have a choice of essay there. Okay, now so we move on now to Ireland topic four. Nobody does it. Ireland topic five. Very, very few schools do it. I think maybe eight, nine percent. Um, Question one, how did Lamassa, Whitaker strengthen the economy or seek to improve relations with Northern Ireland? Nice question. And are. So you can you can deal with both. And you don't have to deal with both equally, right? I'd say most people there will, will spend most of their time talking about the economy and do a little bit on the relations with the North. Uh, number two, during the period 73 to 89, how did involvement in the EC affect the Republic of Ireland? So there's the, the fisheries case study. But then again, like uh, with all these kind of case study type questions, that'll be an aspect you'll speak of. You've got to broaden your approach to it. Number three, what was the influence on Irish life of John Charles McQuaid and Vatican II? That's a popular question that comes up there 
uh, fairly regularly. And number four, during the period 49 to 89, what developments took place in the following education, housing and broadcast? Okay, a nice question also. Now, so, question, we're on section three. Again, Europe and the world, 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 world topic one, very, f I don't think anyone does it. Or do they have a second? No, no, they don't. Uh, topic two, very few schools do it. So we, we'll, go, we'll go straight to the big beast. Dictatorship and democracy. Um, and again, I suppose there was an anticipation that there would be a propaganda question here. There is. There is actually. It is there, but it's not worded uh, in the way students would expect. Now, question one. Uh, by the way, um, topic three here, it's interwar Britain, uh, Germany, Italy, Russia, everywhere. Interwar everything here. Um, question one, why did Italy and our Germany embrace dictatorship in the interwar period? Okay, so you're, you're, you're going to talk there about the source, social and economic issues, you know, uh, that impacted on those countries and I suppose gave a breeding ground then for dictators and their parties in both those countries but I suppose you would have to include that but you could also bring into it as well the impact of propaganda how that was used to fasten their hold on the people you know um I don't think many students will will, will figure that out in the in the heat of the exam uh, number two uh, lovely question what were the main social and economic challenges facing Britain during the 1920 to 39 the interwar period again you know so Again, I suppose a lot of students will go straight to Jarrow. They always do that. Um, you would sometimes you read essays here and you think the only thing that happened during these two decades is Jarrow, but no, you know, you, they, you have to deal with, I suppose, the post war, World War One crisis Britain was in. Um, like the 20s were no fun. And then you have the Wall Street crash and the hungry 30s. And I suppose in the middle of the 30s, there is a recovery. and But it's not happening in Jarrow. And what they do to highlight their cause. Okay. Number three, yes, he came up, we got a Stalin question. Um, and I suppose it is one of those questions where they talk about peace and war, peace and war. So I'd say most students will talk there about, you know, the, the short trials, the use of terror, his economic policy. But I think to get the H1 here, there'll have to be some reference uh, to World War Two. You know, if you have one paragraph about um, signing the Nazi-Soviet pact, that pact being broken, the invasion, and I suppose the... You know, how Stalin, well, mainly Zukov, his general, responded to this threat eventually uh, successfully, right? And number four, ooh, not a fan of this question. I, very, very few people will do this. What was the impact of Anglo-American culture on Europe, right? Wouldn't be a very popular one there, no. Okay, now, uh, Europe and the world, topic four, division and alignment. Very few schools do it. Topic five, very few schools do it. I'll go straight to the other big beast. And, whoa, where's the moon? No moon landing, right? Hotly tipped and, you know, but it's not there. But like the Irish topic three, there's enough here now that students will be able to work with, right? You look at the first question there, how effectively did US leaders, presidents, deal with problems posed by two of the following? So I'd say a lot of people here will go for Cuba and Vietnam, but you have Korea as well, right? Uh, number two, this will be the most popular question done this year. What were the key developments in race relations from 1945 to 1989? Right, Very, very nice question there. And I suppose at the heart of it then you'll have the, the Montgomery bus boycott. Once it's not the main aspect of that essay, right? Um, a lot of students will do that. They'll learn the case studies and use will write forever on just Montgomery. And again, you would think in that 45-year period, that was the only thing that happened. There's more to it than that. It, You know... You, you've got to do it, like I suppose Montgomery being the launch pad for King and uh, his very successful campaigns that lead to things like the 1964 Civil Rights Act, the 1965 Civil Rights Act, where we get to a point where eventually a black American president is elected, you know, but you know, as we know, America is still a very racist place, unfortunately. Um, no, number three, hotly tipped, and we got it, it was due, definitely. What were the strengths and weaknesses of the US economy from 1945 to 89? Okay, I can see a lot of people going there. And number four, what was the contribution to American life of two of the following? Uh, lads, come on, bring back the two or more, right? Th that question is gone. Uh, so the options here are Betty Frieden, Billy Graham, Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Okay, so there you go. That is my take on this year's Leaving Cert paper. Hey.
again, I think it'll be broadly welcomed, you know. There'll be some disappointment that there was no Collins or no moon landing question. But come here, lads, we, we can't be banking on just one essay. And I, I, I don't think very many people do, you know. Uh, this is higher level history, you know. You, you, you've got to have a broader a broader understanding of the material than that. And, I, and most people do, to be fair, to be fair. Um, so I, I, I love the DBQ question. All right, again, especially that question four, there'll be fine, long, meaty answers there, you know. That's what I'd be anticipating when I'm correcting the thing. Um, but overall, a, a very nice paper. And I suppose next year, what have we got to watch out for? Let's, the moon has to come up, right? Has to come up at some point. Uh, so hopefully in 2023, uh, the whole Collins thing, let's forget about it, right? If he, if he didn't come up this year, as I said before, he's never. it's never going to happen. All right, let's. Uh, whoever you are, uh, I hope you... Have a lovely summer, right? Get some rest now and um, wishing you and students watching uh, a, very, a, very, a very nice summer, okay? Till next time, this is Patrick. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.